Welcome to the virtual concert series of Bach in Baltimore. I'd like to explore with you at the, right now one of Bach's most beloved cantatas, and actually one of my favorites also. It's Cantata 140, Wacket auf, ruft uns die Stimme. In English, wake, arise, the voices call us. It's a cantata associated with Advent, usually. And it was first performed in November of 1731. So Bach, being born in 1685 and dying in 1750, he's at the absolute height of his powers about um, just under 20 years before his death. And the work is based on one of the parables of Jesus, as found in St. Matthew's Gospel, the 25th chapter. The parable centers on the story of 10 bridesmaids who are waiting for a bridegroom. And the bridesmaids fall into two groups, those who are prepared for the wait, in this eve for this evening wedding and those who are not. Bach seizes on this idea of two and it's going to permeate the entire cantata from end to end as we'll see. First of all, the, Bach, the cantata itself is composed on two levels. There's the literal level of the story and then um, and the, basically the retelling of the parable and then a deeper story, a subjective story that explores the expansion of a personal commitment um, to a larger one for all of humanity. So the idea of, of that first appears in the, cons in the cantata shows up like this. Now, did you notice two things about that? The first thing is th these are the strings and the oboes of the orchestra. They're playing at the bottom of their range. Um, so there's a kind of a darkness to the color. And so this is reminiscent of it being at nighttime. But then the rhythm pattern, the, the, you heard the rhythm. That rhythm is called the French overture style. And I think it's important to know what that re refers to. It's a rhythm first associated with music that was written for King Louis XIV of France, the so-called Sun King. And ever since it was first appeared, um, it's been associated with royalty. So Bach is saying in this opening music that the royalty, that this piece about a story of bridesmaids awaiting somebody come, coming is awaiting a royal bridegroom. So we're talking about Bach writing for two groups. And here we see those two groups. Um, here are the double reeds of the orchestra, oboes and an English horn. Um, and here we have the upper strings, violins and violas. So this French overture style rhythm showing that the royal king bridegroom is coming is alternated from one group to the other, back and forth, emphasizing the fact that this is in groups of two. So where is this bridegroom coming from? Well, the, the bridesmaids aren't really sure. And so we have both groups of instruments have their first player, the first violin and the first oboe, uh, go off in search. So the violin plays this kind of uh, energetic, excited hunt, running off, looking. And immediately after that, the oboe plays. And also looking, and they're looking in different directions. And rather quickly, they can't find him. So again, Bach alludes back to who they're looking for, a royal bridegroom. And so now both instruments, particularly the oboe, go way up high to like a mountaintop, if you will, and linger up there. And when they linger up there, they have these long notes reminiscent of a halo or perhaps a crown. Again, another reference to a king. And it sounds like this. Here comes our oboe. staying up top, hunting for the royal bridegroom. Now, at this place, the sopranos in the choir are going to enter. 
And they're going to sing this tune associated with the text, Vakarauf. And as, as you'll see as we go through this, this is a well-known tune. In fact, um, Philip Nikolai wrote this hymn tune a hundred years before Bach in the text. So the tune is 400 years old, and it still can be found in many, maybe even most, hymn books today. That's what a wonderful and beloved tune it is. And the sopranos come in and sing that tune in long notes. underneath the, the rhythms of the, the royal rhythms continues to go and, and above it also the solo violin and the solo oboe continue to search so while the sopranos are singing this long stately rhythm you hear and, and on and on they look her, such searching for this bridegroom, which within the music Bacchus indicated is a royal bridegroom. Now, this treatment of the text continues all the way through this hymn, which is a long hymn, until it gets to the word Alleluia towards the end. And I just love this place. Every time we get to this place, I just cherish it. Because at this place, Bach's inventive genius, his melodicness, his, his, the plasticity of his melodies asserts itself in a wonderful way. And actually the image that came to my mind the very first time I did this was of reading um, a dictionary definition in an unabridged dictionary, like say the Oxford unabridged English dictionary. You know how when you read a definition of an of a inter interesting word, sometimes the definition covers an entire column within the dictionary. Well, that's what Bach does on the word Alleluia. He's trying to say in his treatment of the word Alleluia that our Alleluias should be endlessly inventive and joyful. And he writes an endlessly inventive and joyful treatment for this word. Now, all four sections of the choir are going to sing this. And I'm going to play just one section of the choir, the first one to come in, which is the alto. And I'm just going to play there first, if you will, treatment of the word Alleluia and you'll see how it just goes and goes and it has different rhythms and different runs and melismas and all kinds of interesting things. Syncopation, uh, dancing notes as this as Bach's astonishing genius asserts itself on the word Alleluia. Alleluia. By the way it's reminiscent a little bit of what we heard the oboe and the violin do in the beginning hunting for the bridegroom. That's not even the end of this wonderful alto line, and it's weaving and dancing together with the other lines um, within the piece. It's just a wonderful, wonderful moment. And so I hope when you listen to the entire work, you'll, you'll uh, particularly um, burrow in at this moment and appreciate and enjoy Bach's amazing genius uh, at this spot. <laughs> 